This is a reading from The Red Place, a book-length sequence by the Norwegian poet Lars Armand Vorga. I translated it together with Hanna Bramnes. The first poem is, in a sense, the title poem. Mother went to the red place with grand gestures, as if she had made up her mind, but it was not so. Mother went to the red place and passed through it. She did not notice she had been there. When she came out on the other side, she immediately went to another red place. She went from one red place to another, passing through them all. The red places formed a ribbon around her life. Mother held this ribbon together with grand gestures and a will to live. The red places were a burning necklace around Mother's life. Mother fell from her childhood through the red places which hung from the sky. Mother fell through the red places while she went from one to another. Mother fell in toward her own hot red centre while she carried out the grand gestures. Mother fell and moved around in a circle which was impossible. Finally, she found herself in a red place. She found a haven in a red rest home. There she sat, inside the red place. Her feet would go no further. And that one is included, if you're interested in hearing the Norwegian read by the poet himself, in a CD, Den Raudestaden. Many years later, I went to the house where mother lived, I came down the road, opened the door. Mother was not there. I ask, can a house become invisible? Torn down, so not even the sight shows up in the grey heather? Can a house slide off a steep hill, be swallowed by the sand, be one with the sea? Or is it light that wipes the house out? I entered the living room. Although she was gone, Mother was there. Her things were clean, orderly, laid out, everything planned by the forces of life, birth, still lingering. I knew at once where she had gone. Sometimes she took herself off somewhere quieter, wordless neighbourhoods that opened up to her. Then she walked by the roadside in the grass and scrub, which grew invisible or no longer existed, just as the house, too, was floating on the edge of the reel. Mother went to her other house, a higher place, a bare building, a silent structure, from where she could see the main road. Who would come? Who would leave? And those who never appeared. I followed her in through the doors she had opened and saw that she was standing or sitting on the floor, far off by a non-existent wall. I met her gaze, filled with light and water, a coastline, cracked rock, a scrap of wood and the stormy sky. Somewhere in father's body, past autumn-coloured alveoli, in among pink membranes stretching down towards hollows, above pale organs, through the vascular paths that branch amongst tight, quiet musculature, there is a small glade where animals graze. When I sit and play, I think of father. Not because he listened to me very often or encouraged me, but music, he said. Music, said father. Nothing more than that, and also nothing less. Music is far away from here. Perhaps that is what he meant. Father created the landscape. At least he rolled out rocks and pulled up roots, but the roots also pulled him down towards them. I walk in the landscape father shaped. Afterwards he let it all grow over and become as it was before. Where is father? 
He is standing by the edge of a bog. He has blue clothes and grey skin. I stand close by him, as close as I can come without becoming him. He stands by me, outside of me, whistling notes that don't exist. He lifts his head towards the fells. They too must fall, my poor, poor father.